welcome back. Look at that. That's that look. We're gonna go and do another scrap rescue mission today. Um, yeah, we need some wrenching and lifting gear. I can't film at the location, but I may take some still pictures. All right, let's go there. So we're back. And what we have here is a Lister single cylinder diesel. It appears to be complete. It has compression. Uh, I don't know exactly the full story of it, but I think it doesn't have. It, I think it hasn't seen a lot of work. This is a Lister Peta four cylinder, which, apart from standing outside, looks in very good condition. Uh, turbo charge one. I don't know. I turned it over and it appears to have compression, but I don't know really right now what it is. So let's unload those and uh, I just saw these engines and uh, it broke my heart to see them going into the scrap. So that's the reason why I actually grabbed them. And uh, we'll see what we do with it. Maybe that's a nice generator. I don't know. We'll see. Sorry, it's a bit windy here. So we're back from our journey. Um, it feels like we got a, a million lin bins here. It was one big box full of lin bins. It was very cheap actually. Uh, some other bits. And uh, that's my suck truck and the engine crane. We got a generator head for one of our engines. Uh, we got something interesting here. We'll unpack that. We got a whole bunch of uh, scaffold boards, which will become the trailer decking, because the stuff which I have there at the moment is not up to scratch. It's pretty weak. So we got the generator unloaded. According to the seller, it's uh, unused. It's just stored for quite a while in a wood shop, and it, it's pretty. It was pretty dusty. I blowed it off. Uh, <coughs> we got one problem. Our flywheel is not a SAE flywheel. The flange, the outside flange diameter here, is SAE, but the flywheel isn't. Uh, we got about 20 millimeters or so, which we need to space out, and we also need to make a spacer for the flex plate because I don't want to machine anything off the flywheel. Uh, more is always better, so I'll leave it. I think it's a. I don't know. It's got it's got drilled holes on the outer diameter, probably for a bigger flex blade. But the problem is here, the bolts are sticking out too far. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the flywheel bolts. We've got a starter motor, which was not cheap. This engine didn't come with one. Uh, the engine is has very low hours, so we need to find a spacer. I don't have anything in a diameter. I probably call the laser cutting guys and ask them to make me one. The engine is an LW, uh, yeah, LWP4. Um, the generator is 22 kVA, so they should fit nicely, 1500 RPM. Let's put everything in the box here, voltage regulator, meter. Uh, yeah, it comes from China, obviously, but we'll see what it does. Uh, we're going to take the back cover off and see, because it doesn't come with the original flex plate uh, locking plate, there is normally a uh, a metal bracket over it which stops the rotor from coming out so if we take the back cover off we can check if the bearing is fully in and then we take measurements and uh, get a flange that's the plan for now well apparently the bearing is fully in shaft is fully in bearing is fully in so it didn't come out so we can take the measurements from the front 
and uh, we need to make an adapter flange because uh, normally the SAE flywheel is a bit thinner and got a recess but as I said before I don't want to machine anything off because more is better gives it more equal power delivery on, on shock loads guess there's a bit of energy stored in the flywheel anyway uh, let's put the cover back on and uh, do the measurements welcome back today we're gonna give this engine a crank over here see if it works at all fitted the battery here we got our new starter motor fitted uh, and let's see what it does that's the very first time obviously take the oh no there is nothing in it there was something in the intake i thought anyway let's see what it does it's cranking it's cranking fast good compression diesel is pissing out here on the, from the return line so we should be okay uh, it may need some diesel I deliberately didn't do that because uh, when we run it before we fire it we'll open the pressure line of the turbocharger just to see if we actually have oil there before it fires because if that thing goes dry uh, it's instantly dead okay let's hook up some return line here punch that into a tank or so yeah we need to catch that return fuel and uh, then we crank it until we have oil pressure because it hasn't been running for a very long time and um, it might be bone dry there is oil in it but it might be bone dry it cranks over nicely which is good seems to have equal compression on all the cylinders there was some smoke coming out so we should be okay uh, what we need to do is actually make sure we have oil in the turbocharger before it fires we have no cooling water in it as well because the the coolant pump is uh, a bit sticky we need to take it out and free it up all right so far so good so we had we had it running briefly there was a lot of smoke coming out uh, there is some fuel in the line let's just fire it up again and uh, See what it does. Now the fuel is over. I think there was some fuel in the lines left, but it seems to work. There's a hell of a smoke here. I didn't hook up the the intake heater. Uh, that would help help a little bit. Uh, but yeah it works which is good so we have no cooling nothing so we can't run it for long anyway um, which uh, is good because again we need to hook it up to the alternator and uh, it's a pure mechanical engine there is no electronics on it it just fires without power the only power it needs is for the starter and uh, we need to drop the spacer so we get a laser cut and uh, in the meantime we make an exhaust and uh, obviously sold out the coolant pump because the pump is seized there was coolant in it and it's probably dried out um, I think the fuel filter was full with fuel but now it's gone pretty simple design that engine it's got uh, single injectors here sitting here they driven by a cam and uh, yeah no glow blocks uh, only an intake heater the reason why it actually went through here is because that hook has been ripped off here and that uh, basically ripped the hole into it so and uh, that's quite old actually yeah. I think that's four years old five years maybe so 
we're gonna replace that. So here we got the old bastard. We got the new one barely fitted. Just hanging in at the moment. Okay, we loaded. Hopefully it's fairly okay. Lots of wood. A little bit of iron. Alright, let's go on. Alright, let's unload that stuff. So we unloaded everything. I'm gonna make use of that in a minute. And uh, doesn't look that much anymore, but I think it's about 600 kilos, 700 kilos maybe. Uh, yeah, it was good. I come back. We just had a delivery. Our radio just arrived for the generator. They were so cheap, I just bought a few different ones. Uh, they were about five pound each, six pound each, so whatever, seven, eight dollars each. Um, couldn't resist, they're actually made in China. Uh, yeah. There are for, most are for weird cars, uh, pretty much outdated models, and uh, it was uh, clearance whatever we'll have a look inside how they look like we got our first radiator unpacked and it looks actually quite good for that money uh, it's big that's gonna be the radiator for the workshop so there will be a fan and just blowing the air the hot air in the workshop nice and big I don't know what it is I think it's from Mazda or something I think it was from Mazda B200 or something like that some whole thing. It even got the automatic uh, cooler in it. So we put a, a similar smaller one on the generator and used that for oil cooling to get a little bit more heat out of the engine. Anyway, that's coming to a later point. Let's make those dial pins. Now here we got a bunch of alternators. Uh, super cheap as well. This one is a Valeo um, 70 amps. It's about the right size for my generator. Um, it was eight pounds, ten dollars, including shipping. You can't beat that. It's brand spanking new. And the other one is a slightly bigger one. I need to check the pulley, but all we need to make is a bracket, straight fit. All we need to make is a bracket to fit it to the engine, and uh, that's about it. So we got everything fitted here. Um, I need to make some dowel pins. That's a 10 millimeter dowel pin, and that's just an, an old 10 millimeter tap. Uh, we got it all torqued up, got it primed. And uh, yeah, make some pins. Uh, we don't care about the other holes because there are no holes here. And if I put the pins here, we have an imbalance. So that's the reason why it's two opposite ones. Should be fine. Uh, yeah, we need to get the generator on. Uh, don't know. This thing is heavy. I need to do. The, I need to get the crane. So we run into a little problem here. Uh, the intake manifold is actually fouling on the lifting ear. So we're going to take it off. We can put it back on because there is enough space. It's just getting it in is impossible. So that needs to come off. Yeah, life would be too easy if everything works smooth. All right, let's do that. So we got it mounted. Uh, Still need to put the bottom bolts in, but uh, yeah, it fits. It's uh, the flex plate bolts are a bit of a pain to get there, but that's normal. I think my studs are a bit long, but they help. They really help to align it because you're never going to be straight. So now comes the fiddliest part. I don't know if you see that. I don't know if you see that socket on there. It's actually getting. 
flex plate boards in, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but yeah, that's how it's designed. There's nothing you can do. It's always a challenge to get them in. I don't know if it's visible. Here is the socket. And the bolt is down there. Here we go. So, I cut that stud off so I could get there. I'm trying a different socket arrangement. Hopefully, we'll get there somehow. Anyway, let's fiddle those in. I got two in. I got six more to go. We got everything back together and we got some clearance here on the boost pipe. Once the holder is there, it's fine. We don't touch it. We got all the bolts in. Took me about an hour to get them all in. It's mainly because you need to turn it over. Anyway, let's fix that water pump. Uh, find some alternator and a belt. Uh, yeah. And then we'll fire it up. We need to make an exhaust. We got the uh, flange here. I don't know where that comes from. And uh, one will give it a crank. But not today. We had enough Sunday afternoon. All right. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time.